Okay, so uh, most of the people know me here because I have talked like many times. Half the class, but half you. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> just for the people who don't know uh, who I am and what I'm talking about, uh, basically uh, it, I started as a pure mathematician. My background is pure mathematics. Then I uh, started uh, making algorithms for uh, a personalized search engine. Then for a short while I also worked in Mind Valley as a web developer. Then I started my own company about web development. And I always wanted to make games. <laughs> so uh, now apart from doing web development, I'm also uh, making games and also making content about games. So I'll be talking about this hot topic of game cloning. Uh, whoever is in touch with uh, the game industry, they know that this is like a burning topic right now. But uh, before I begin, I, I need to tell you that this is like a nuanced topic. And PowerPoint presentation is not a very good medium for these kind of things. Uh, I mean, we don't think in linear terms. We think in patches and we uh, bring them together, stick them together, but you can't do that in PowerPoint. So, <laughs> so what I urge you to do, urge you to do is to just uh, keep all these things in mind, and hopefully by the end of the presentation, things will fall into place in your mind. And if not by the end of the presentation, then maybe tomorrow, if you keep thinking about it. <laughs> but uh, that's a modest surprise. And second thing, very important thing I, I need to uh, reveal is that I visited a doctor and he told me that uh, not to use a part of the brain where you can, from which you make good PowerPoint presentations. So due to medical reasons, uh, my PowerPoint presentations don't look too good. <laughs> it's all about that. <laughs> So let's begin. Okay. So we are talking about cloning, and this is a hot topic right now because there are many gamers. But but this this, this issue of cloning is as old as the time itself. And I'm sure you know about this game form. At least you know about it. I'm sure hardly anyone played it. Uh, most of them, most of the people were not even born at that time. So <laughs> Look at this, and then. Think about breakout. Wasn't it? Yeah. Atari. Yeah, Atari. Yeah. So, so I'm sure you can find some resemblance between the two. And if you say that breakout is a clone, some kind of clone of Kong, then I would show you this. Okay. So this is a game I played in my NES, and I really loved it. I did not know that there existed breakout and there existed Kong. But this was one of my favorite games. So you see, this cloning has been going on for a very long time. This is not a new issue. Now let's fast forward to, to 2000, January 2012. Uh, do you know about Dream Heights? It's an iPhone game made by Zynga. And uh, they got a very bad PR because supposedly they cloned Tiny Towers. <laughs> So actually, the, 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 the CEO of, of Nimblebits, who made Time Tower, wrote an open letter thanking Zynga for uh, taking such overt uh, inspiration uh, for, for, for making Dream Heights. But then there was one more open letter by the creator of this game. <laughs> it is a Flash game. I, I have played it before I played Time Towers. Uh, to be fair, uh, Time Tower is not exactly a clone of corporation, but you can see that. It is heavily inspired by this. And then I found out that there is something more called Sim Tower. <laughs> <laughs> but again, Sim Tower is, is, is actually quite different from Time Tower's main such thing because Sim Tower is more uh, uh, leaning towards simulation and, uh, and Time Tower is more towards time management. But you, see, but you can see the chain of inspiration going on here. Okay. Now let's come to Angry Birds. Most favorite. <laughs> the first time I saw Angry Birds, I said, hey, I've seen it before. <laughs> <laughs> Crush the Castle was released like way before, like seven months. Seven. Yeah, yeah some, something like that. Seven months before Angry Birds, and I had Late Crush the Castle is, is, is a flash game. And it is basically the same. You, you swing stones instead of birds, and, 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 and you kill kings instead of pigs. <laughs> basically, it's 
same. <laughs> so, so this cloning is, is not is not concentrated to a few companies or a few games. It's a it's a systemic phenomenon. I mean, it is embedded in the system itself. And uh, but the concern remains that what are you going to do about it? People keep cloning your games. Uh, is it does it really hurt if, if people clone the games? Uh, the, the, the basic uh, arguments against cloning is that latent cloning harms industry, <coughs> decreases motivation of developers, gives hackneyed product to consumers. Now, it is not a tested hypothesis, but a reasonable hypothesis. <coughs> now, I, I read an article about game cloning in Gamma Sutra. It's a very bombastic article. This guy, Russell Crow Carroll, actually uh, insists that cloning created the casual game business. What he did was he, he, he studied the, all the main games that were going on in casual gaming market, uh, downloadable PC games, and uh, he found out that uh, most of the games which sold well were, belonged to a very few genres, which involved very a uh, limited number of mechanics like uh, point and click management or, or mash 3 and uh, people did not actually play one particular game, they actually played the genre. So if there was just one particular game of one genre, it wouldn't have been that popular. And he also further uh, uh, talked about originality in games. The problem with originality is that most of it is crap. <laughs> Sorry for my French. <laughs> Most that is different is not notable. And so if there is a market pressure to only create new games, that most of what you will get is nonsense. And, and common becomes familiar, because once you're familiar with the mechanics, especially the casual players who don't want to experiment something too new, uh, the familiarity actually, uh, actually, actually expands the market. And the most original ideas have to be copied before they get popular. So there's just one game which has one particular, which, which is like a, uh, which belongs to just one particular, if there is just one game in one particular genre, it won't be as popular if, if there are more games in the same genre, uh, applying the same mechanics. And there is another problem, especially with casual games, is that of complexity. You see, when the video game market was still small and it didn't uh, reach the casual gamers, uh, you can innovate with many new things. And uh, hardcore gamers were keen to learn new mechanics and stuff. So you can, you, 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 you should be fine if you apply steep learning curve for hardcore gamers. But the problem with the casual gamers is that they can't try something totally new. They want gradation. So the market itself demands that there should be lots of overlap between the games which you have already played. If you come, come up with something totally new, most probably people won't even try it. So that is his argument, and uh, he said that actually cloning created the casual game business. So those, those, those are the two sides of the argument. And, uh, and there's one more very important thing that you need to uh, take note of. If you are a game designer, you must have noticed that a very small delta in mechanics can cause a significant change in gameplay. Which means that you cannot compare feature to feature two games and say that, hey, 95% of this is copied. You cannot say that because even 5% change in mechanics can create a huge change in gameplay. So you need to be more nuanced in, in declaring if something is a clone or not. For example, uh, I played this game Diner Dash. I'm sure many of you have played it. Embarrassing to admit, <laughs> obviously. I, I, did, I, I have played it. And and I love it. And basically, basically, for people who don't know, it is a time management game where you drag people to certain tables and they take some time to order their food and you have to bring the proper food to them and clean the table and collect their coins <laughs> without uh, making anyone wait for too long. So it's a very addictive time management game. Then after Dan and Dyker released, there was a more game called Cake Mania. Cake Mania is almost exactly like that. The only difference is that in Cake Mania you don't have to place people in a particular table, but you have to do the same. You have to uh, order, you have to provide them whatever they ordered, and uh, you have to clean the table and you have to collect money. There was one more difference though, that you have to match the color of 
whatever toppings they have. <laughs> so that color matching, that, that color matching actually uh, gave a very different feel to the game. If you, if, if you really play these two games, you'll, you'll get a very different feeling just because of the slight change in the mechanism. Uh, so, so my point is that a very small change in mechanics can bring about a huge change in the game. But that's one more thing. Okay, now, uh, before, so this is an introduction to what is going on, just a background on toning of games and stuff like that. Now let us get into profit and loss. <laughs> Ka -ching. Ka -ching. <laughs> okay, some axioms we all agree on before we proceed is that any practice should result in net benefit to the developers because if it does not benefit the developers, they will stop making games. And any practice should result in net benefit to the ecosystem because if the ecosystem is unhealthy, then you won't be able to sell your games. And any other way, the relationship becomes exploited. I mean, that's that's a general axiom of any relationship that all the parties should benefit, otherwise it is, it is an exploitative relationship. And one more thing, uh, one more thing I've noticed that when people propose a solution, they, they the reasoning goes something like this: Hey, this is a solution. If I do this, then this thing will stop. Therefore, this is a good solution. But that's not the way to think. You, you also need to take into account that what are the side effects your solution is bringing. Without taking, uh, without taking into consideration the side effects, you cannot deem a uh, solution proper. So whenever we talk about solution, about this problem of game cloning, you also need to see what are the side effects. And, and I trolled the internet, and I found out that there are two popular solutions which are talked about the most. When it's stronger IP protection, I don't need to talk about stronger IP protection. You, need, you have seen that what has happened in the web development or the software fields where there is lots of IP protection and, 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 and uh, patents and stuff like that. We don't want that to get into game industry, otherwise we'll just wreck hell. I mean, right now you're saying that, hey, big, big, big companies are stealing my game and therefore it is harming us. <coughs> But the thing is that how much it is harming you is not clear. But if big companies start suing you, then it is 100% that you are going to get screwed. <laughs> <laughs> so you have to see that how much harm is being done by having a strong, stronger IP protection than it is not. But of course, there, there's a case for, for copyrights, like that people shouldn't be stealing your music exactly or all this tangible stuff like. Your, your, your graphics exactly, but that, that's, that's a different, different story. Okay, one more uh, solution is naming and shaming the owners. I mean, this seems like a good idea that you can go to the internet and, and, and complain about people cloning your games. But it is actually not such a good idea, I mean, Because what, what happens is that uh, when, when you try to name and shame people, uh, it creates an atmosphere of fear of lynching, and fear is the biggest enemy of creativity. So you cannot uh, make a society where lynching by anyone is allowed. And people, and as I said before, this, 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 this uh, concept of cloning in game is very subtle because even a small change can bring about a great difference in gameplay. So you can't say that, hey, you just change this and therefore you just going to clone and start lynching him. And, uh, and and big, big companies can get away with uh, you know, bad PR, but uh, small people, small indie developers cannot. So actually naming and shaming is actually bad for indie developers. Because so there's an atmosphere of fear. And the fact remains that every game borrows from somewhere in some way. So you don't escape uh, being called uh, uh, somebody who clones a game. I mean, it has to be there. So naming and shaming is also not a, not, 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 not a good thing. So I have told you the overview. I've told you that what are the possible solutions and what are the drawbacks. So what is the way forward and what can we do? Uh, what I am going to do personally is a, is a two step towards a solution, which I think might be helpful. Before that, let me tell you, let me relate to you an anecdote uh, happened to me when I was in college. Uh, my professor asked me to write a short uh, uh, article, uh, a, a short thesis on a particular problem, a particular problem in 39. So I went back and 
wrote a beautiful thesis on it and came to him. I was very happy with it. And he said that, oh, good solution, but where is, uh, where is the citation, where is the bibliography? Do you think it's, it's your original idea? I said that, as a matter of fact, it is. I invented it. He said that you think you invented it, but actually you haven't. So I had to retroactively go back and find uh, solutions which are similar to me, which were done before me, and I had to give references. And uh, if you write a research paper, and if you don't cite references, people will look down on you. People won't, won't take you seriously. So you need to give references. You need to show that there is a precedence to what you have done. But it is the exact opposite in game industry. I mean, if people see that there is a precedence to what you have done, then people will look down upon you. And they want something to be original. But that's because game industry is not as mature as scientific uh, community. So what I propose to do is this. <laughs> I'm not exactly. I mean, I don't mean to say that you need to give reference to oh my God. local automorphism and mapping of smooth, strictly pseudo-convex hypersurfaces, but <laughs> oh, that was a good read. <laughs> Two times up. Give this as a reference to my next game. <laughs> <laughs> but I want to do something similar. Uh, we have bibliography. Uh, one, I would like to include ludography in the game then. Ludo is Latin for play. As I remember, biblio is Latin for books. So whatever game I'm going to make, I am going to give references from all the games I could have possibly taken inspiration for it. So it changes the problem on its head that uh, it is you are considered more respectable when you actually reveal that you have taken inspiration from these kind of things. But if you try to appear that uh, you are standing on your own, then most of you are wrong. But this is one thing I'm going to do. And uh, another thing I'm going to do, I also, uh, since I'm making games, I, I'm, I'm also operating a web page which, which concerns with, with gaming. Uh, and what I'm going to do is, uh, I'm going to open up a section in my site called Clone My Game, <laughs> which is a joke on this whole issue. And I will, I will, I will put all, all my ideas of my games openly with, uh, with sprites and possibly music. It won't exactly be a full-fledged game, but it can be a good springboard for anyone to you know, like take inspiration. And you don't have to take inspiration from just one game. You can see various games. and. You can think of something from that those games, and from those things you can think of something else. So the whole idea is that I want to make it open. And ideas matter, because those are the starting points of your product. But at the same time, ideas don't matter, because it's execution that matters. So I'm going to do two things. I'm going to put logography, and I'm going to open my <laughs> game ideas in my website. And uh, as I said, some of the things might have seemed disconnected, but I would like you to make it all fall into its place. So this was my whole presentation to enlighten you about what is going on in game industry and what could be a way forward and what you can do. And thank you. And in case, wait. <laughs> I just want to propound it that you should give references. So some of your smart ass might be thinking that where is your references? <laughs> so, uh, I will be I will be uh, starting this new session from my game. Uh, just follow me. I can I will announce it on my Twitter feed. Awesome. Thank you.